Welcome back to the Product Biz Podcast. My name is Monica Little, and today we are talking about the number one, top, best, most impactful way to use chat GPT and AI in your business. Now, today's episode may be a little bit of a shaker, a ground shaker, a groundbreaker. We're going to really toss some things up. Because what I see happening to level set the foundation here is that a lot of business owners are using chat GPT as the marketer in their business. Now, what you've heard me say time and time again is that the main role that you fill in your business is a marketer. That is a hill that I will die on because in order to grow your business, you have to be good at marketing. What does that mean? If you have a great product, but no one knows about it, what good is that? That's a famous Nike quote that is so true. If you have an incredible product and you're so great at making your product and you have a beautiful, unique, most amazing product out there. However, if you don't know how to market your product, connect with an audience, get in front of the right people, you are going to be spinning, 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 spinning your wheels and not getting any results. Marketing is what gets you in front of more people and what gets the actual sale. Now, what I see a lot of small business owners doing is in the world of instant results and in the world of being busy, 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 people are using chat GPT and outsourcing their entire marketing department to chat GPT. What do I mean by this? If you are having ChatGPT write blog posts for you, write emails for you, or write social media captions for you, you have officially delegated most of your marketing to a computer-based artificial intelligence program called ChatGPT. Now, why most people do this is for those two reasons, instant results. What do I mean by that? People don't want to sit down and actually spend the time to write a caption, to write an email, to write a blog post. And you got a really quick, easy, shiny way to do that by typing in some prompts into chat GPT, copying and pasting it in those places and having it done. Now, the other reason people tend to use chat GPT GPT in this way is from the standpoint of being so busy, having a million things to do, wanting to do them all, feeling the need to do them all right now, and using chat GPT to get things done as fast as possible and to mark it off your list and to go to the next item. What I will tell you is the biggest mistake that small business owners are making right now is giving the reins of your marketing department over to chat GPT. I hate to break it to you, but if anything seems too good to be true, it probably is. So if writing a quick prompt into ChatGPT in order to create a blog post seems so damn good to be true and too damn good to be true, it is too good to be true. Because here's what's happening. When you are giving the reins to your marketing department to ChatGPT, you are losing connection with your people. And the scary part of this is people subconsciously can tell if someone who's not a person wrote a post. What do I mean by that? ChatGPT, I mean, they're still learning, right? And if you don't know what ChatGPT is, I'm assuming you probably do if you're about four minutes into this episode, right? Some sort of and some sort of computer program, you go to a website, you type in a prompt like write a blog post for someone who is experiencing this and would use this type of product to fix their problem or whatever it is. And ChatGPT will spit out a ton of information for you. Now the problem is that people can subconsciously tell that it wasn't written by a person because ChatGPT is not a person, right? It's a machine, it's artificial intelligence. And always and also right now, especially with the words that they're using, you can tell. You can so tell when someone has used chat B- GPT for a big piece of content. People can subconsciously register that this isn't actually how a person talks. There's a lot of adjectives in this. There's a lot of really big words in this that people don't really use nowadays when they talk. Now, what makes this scary is people can subconsciously tell that this piece has been written by a computer. Where this snowballs is, 
when your audience gets desensitized to your content. What I really mean by this is if you send three or four emails and the entire three or four emails are written by chat GPT and you have a customer who's on your email list and they subconsciously can tell that it wasn't a person who wrote it. It sounds kind of weird. A lot of big words, a lot of descriptive words. By email three, you've probably lost them for good and they're either going to unsubscribe or they're not going to open your emails anymore. Now, what does that mean? Well, email is a great place to have a customer. If you can keep them engaged in your content, if you know what to send via email, and if you can get those people excited to open your emails. And if you're doing the inverse of using chat GPT, you will desensitize your email subscribers to your information that you're sending via email, and they're going to no longer open your emails. So this beautiful opportunity that you have to build a relationship with your email subscribers has just gone out the door because maybe you're trying a quick fix. Maybe you're trying to just get it done as soon as possible. And maybe you're outsourcing your marketing department to chat GPT. Where this continues to snowball is if you're also doing it this on Instagram. Trust me, and this is something that my mentor said, which was so gold when he said it, your followers on Instagram are not following you to read a copy and paste caption from chat GPT. That's not why they're following you. And if that's what you're doing, you are going to desensitize your Instagram followers. They see a few posts, they know something in their subconscious that this isn't an actual person writing this, and they are going to, next time they see one of your posts, just keep on scrolling through it, not engage, not read, and you've lost them. Same with blog posts, same exact situation. If you have content on your website, like your About Me or stories that you have outsourced to ChatGPT, People are going to land on your website and they're going to be so desensitized, they're going to leave. And a lot of this, in my perspective, is kind of happening happening more subconsciously. People won't reach out to you and be like, hey, listen, I just don't relate to your content and emails anymore. They're just going to notice like something's off with the content and emails and they don't want to spend their time reading it anymore. And this is where it truly does get scary because... So many people are outsourcing the words that they use in their business to chat GPT and the words that you you use in your business are one of the most critical, most important parts of your business. That's probably the number one thing I would never, ever, ever, ever outsource in a business is the words that you use. That is 100% you as the owner of the business who knows your customers, who knows your products, who knows the pain points of your customers. Those words and those connections and those stories and those advice and the tips has to come from you. Because your business is a lot of times built on your experience, built on your story, built on your life and what got you to making your products and coming out with your products and the reasons you use particular ingredients and why you built your products in this way. And to outsource that to a computer program to try to now be you and connect with customers for you is a complete backwards way of trying to run a business, 100%. Now, I know those were a lot of negatives. We just went on a little bit of a tangent of all the negatives of ChatGPT, but let me tell you the positives of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is going to drive people to want more authentic connections. ChatGPT is going to drive customers to want to actually connect with someone on a real person-to-person basis. And that is an awesome opportunity because you need to realize that so many small business owners are looking for shiny object, quick results, busy, 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 don't have enough time to work on their business. They're going to outsource all the words in their business. And that leaves so much opportunity for those who are not going into the artificial intelligence chat GPT route to actually connect and become the people and the businesses who are real and authentic and are showing up while a lot of people are actually falling out. So the number one best way to use ChatGPT in your business is to allow everyone else to use ChatGPT and get really desensitized with their customers while you swoop in and not using ChatGPT, actually focusing on connection, authenticity, showing up as a real human being. And now you are going to capture all of those people who are looking for that authentic connection. So many people are going to be driven away from businesses, from 
products because of ChatGPT that they're just going to be looking for a business or a product that is real, that is using real words, that is telling real stories, that is sharing real experience. And that can be you who steps up into that place that is giving that authentic connection that people are really looking forward. And here's something that makes this really interesting. So my voice coach said that buyer trust is down. And what that essentially means is that people who are buying products, services that are buying anything, they are less trusting and they're more skeptical of what they're about to buy, who they're about to buy from, and everything that encompasses the buying decision. So if you sell a physical product, and in general with consumers, people who are buying things, trust is down your main goal is to show more trust, to be more trustworthy. Now, what's more trustworthy? A copy and paste paragraph from ChatGPT or your words, your experience, your knowledge, your expertise on your products and why they are a perfect fit for that individual that's reading that caption or that email or that blog post right now. Now I get this is maybe signing up for a little bit more work because we wanted to use ChatGPT to outsource all the words in our business. And here I am telling you like, no, you are the words in your business. Your story is what matters in your business. And the words that you use in your business are the most important part of your business. Think about being a product-based business owner. You are connecting with people via images and via words. What that means is your website is words, your emails are words, your blog posts are words, your Instagram captions are words, your product labor labels are words. Your job is to become so good at words, right? That's what marketing is, to become so good at words to connect through those avenues and also through imagery. So much of e-commerce is having great photos, having great products that are captured with great photos and using that to sell your products and also through videos of you making your products, you talking about your products and you showing up and being your business, right? So the more you can focus on marketing and selling and branding. Those are really the three pillars and having it authentically be you who is doing the marketing and selling rather than chat GPT, the more you are going to have a leg up against everyone else. Now, for those people who are using chat GPT and you're on the busy side of things, like I don't have enough time. I'm using chat GPT because I have so many things that I need to work on. Here's what I want to offer to you. It's not about the number of things that you finish or the number of things you complete or the number of things that you're working on. It's about focusing your time on the tasks that actually move the needle. If you are so bogged down and busy and busy work in your business, you're probably not making progress and chat GPT isn't going to help that. There's a difference between busyness and business and busyness does not equal business. Busyness does not equal sales. So if you are so bogged down and have so much to do that chat GPT is your last resort to get Instagram content out or to get blog posts or to get emails out, then what I want you to do is actually take inventory of what you're working on, what moves the needle, and where should you as the CEO and the top marketer of your business actually spend time to get in front of more people and make more money. Probably just focusing on the wrong things which is actually a very great answer to hear because it means you should be doing less, you should get some time back, life should be a little bit easier and your business can grow. Now, if you're on the other side using ChatGPT because of shiny object syndrome and it sounds like a quick fix and quick results and that's what you want, this is another discussion of where's the hesitation of learning a skill and putting in the work? Now, I will be one to not sugarcoat this and tell you that running a small business takes time, takes energy, takes resources, takes money, and your heart has to fully be in it in order to make it happen. And your heart has to fully be in it for the long run to make it happen. Because trying to run a business by only looking at quick results and the easiest way out, and let me do this because it's a shiny object and it's going to make me successful is going to be what actually keeps you stuck. I want you to take everything that you've learned about business and actually flip it on its head because most advice that's out there is completely ass backwards. I'm going to be very straight honest with you. And most people who are out there who are saying you can grow a business by doing this one thing, by using chat GPT, by doing this, by doing that, growing a business is more complicated than that. 
growing a business is actually pretty challenging. That's why not a lot of people do it. That's why people do it as a hobby. That's why people do it for a couple years and then they give up. That's why people stay stuck at a certain sales level and never reach any higher because it's going to take something from you in order to get those results that you want. And most people aren't willing to do that. Most people are only willing to do the easy work. Most people are only willing to do the chat GPT style work. Now, if you are someone who understands the importance of growing your business, who's ready to actually up level your business and to learn new skills and to become the marketer in your business and who's in it for the long run and who is excited to grow your business because your heart is in it and you know this is what you are meant to do on this planet at this point in time to serve you, to serve your family, to serve your kids, to create a legacy, to change the situation of your life, of your income, of your finances, of what you do on a daily basis. So you have freedom with your life. So you have freedom to do what you love and want to do well that's a different story because if you have that drive and if you have that commitment and that dedication that's when you see results and those are the people who are usually not batting an eye at chat gpt i've honestly never even used chat gpt i don't even know what the website is like how do i get there i have no idea what does the interface look like i don't know Because I know that my business is about connecting with people, sharing my story, and I know I'm in it for the long run, that if I got to write an email and it's going to take me some time to write an email, that's okay. Because I'm worried about connecting with people rather than worried about getting as much done as possible today, right now, in this moment. So if you are one of the people who is dedicated and committed to your business and you're like, yes, I want to grow my business, I'm in it for the long run, and how do I actually do that? Well, I want to invite you to a one-time free training that I am hosting on Monday, May 20th at 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific that you can register for at monicalittlecoaching.com slash live. This is my free training that I host only twice per year. This is the last time this year I'll be hosting it where I'm going to share with you how to create a thriving handmade business without relying on markets. So when we talk about branding, marketing, and selling, this is what we're going to dive into during this free training that you have access to. So you know exactly how to stand out online, stand out against your competitors. So you actually get seen online, get traction online. And so you can step away from selling at markets every single weekend. So if you are someone who preps all week, loads up the car with a tent, with boxes, with tables, leaves at the crack of dawn every single Saturday and Sunday morning to sell at a market all weekend long and just to do it all over again. And you're like, I'm ready for the next level in my business where I have some online income coming in, when I can alleviate some of this pressure to work at markets so I can spend more time with family or friends on weekends and actually have freedom, which is why we started our business. Well, this webinar and this free one-time live training is where you should be on Monday, May 20th. That link again for you to register is monicalittlecoaching.com slash live. And that's what I'm going to leave you with on this super quick episode. You know if this webinar is right for you, if you've resonated with my message today. And if that's you, sign up. I will see you there. And we're going to keep the conversation going on how you can actually stand out and get more traction selling your products online. That link again is monicalittlecoaching.com slash live. I will see you on Monday, May 20th, right around the corner. And I can't wait to talk to you more then. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram at monicalittlecoaching. And I'll see you on next week's episode of the Product Biz Podcast.